So guys, uh, before the break, we went through a quick Citrix introduction. Citrix is a application virtualization. There are three major types of virtualization. Uh, server virtualization, desktop, application virtualization. Citrix, what we are doing is Zen App 6.5. It's application virtualization. In application virtualization, always remember, application won't be installed on client machine. They would use virtual application. So application basically is packaged, and then it is loaned to the people who needs to use it, and then they give it back to the server so that other can use it. Major, major differences between SCCM and Citrix is uh, that it both both have packages, but in SCCM, it would go and install the application and leave it. And then, but Citrix will give it to you as a loan, and then you will give it back to Citrix. Now, in Citrix, uh, these are architectural components here. So we would start with, we started with farm. There are then app servers, and then and then app servers are of three major types. First one is then app application server that host application. I mean, uh, there can be a ZenApp server that is not an application server. For example, a ZenApp server that has that is only a direct lector. So you can you can have a ZenApp server just as a direct lector or ZenApp server just as a license server as well. But ZenApp application server is a server that hosts applications. Now there are some other components that we need to to go through here. So. And then other components, so for example here, primary ZenApp architecture component, you have ZenApp server, you have web interface, data connector, data store, license, and worker groups. So here we are at ZenApp server. ZenApp servers are of for, for now three types that we understood, which are these, ZenApp application server, ZenApp data collector, ZenApp, uh, uh, ZenApp licensing server. And type, other than this, other than this, there is something called uh, then app web interface servers. So then app web interface servers. So here, then app <laughs> web interface server. Now web interface server, just like the name, then app web interface server are responsible for just uh, uh, for just web interface. So this server will will have a then app Citrix website to which users connect to. So this one server. It hosts the Citrix Citrix uh, Citrix web interface. It hosts the Citrix web interface where users connect. Where Users connect and request request application and request application. Now, other than that, there are something called data store uh, uh, data store database. So, other than this, it has you have farms, you have ZenApp servers. And then you have ZenApp Data Store. Now, Data Store is a database which is basically which can be on one server, which can be uh, which can be on the same server. So here we need to understand. So here, just like ZenApp Server, there is something called ZenApp. It can be an external data store. Storage. It can be in an external storage as well. ZenApp Data Store. This is a ZenApp database. This is this is a ZenApp database. This is actually that that is under this. So you have a farm, then farm. You have servers. Servers are of these four types, and this is a separate entity as ZenApp servers. So this is a this is a complete different architectural component. This is ZenApp data store. Now ZenApp data store is it's a it's a database for Citrix servers. It is a Data, it is a database for Citrix Zen app servers. This is NTDDS. Exactly. So you got it right. Just like Active Directory has NTDS, 
this is a data database for complete uh, Zenf infrastructure. So this is a database for complete Zenf infrastructure. Now this data database, it, it holds, it stores the Citrix static information. It stores the Citrix static information. So this is number one. This is number two. It stores. <coughs> Citrix static. It stores Citrix static information. Now, guys, this is compared to data collector. Data collector also stores information, but that has dynamic information. This is a Citrix. This Citrix static information. Now, this is like this is like how many Citrix servers are there? How are they connected? Are they? Uh, do you do you have many other sites in your environment? So basically, this data store it holds all Citrix information. So the first time when you install Citrix environment, this database will be created, and this database will hold all the Citrix configuration. So all your Citrix configuration is stored in this. So uh, although data collector here, remember data collector. We said that it contains Citrix server dynamic information. This has the dynamic information. How much load is there on the server? How many users are connected to Citrix server? And that can change with, with time. But guys, data, data store is the database of Citrix. So the first time when you configure the Citrix environment, it has the conf configuration information. It, what is the Citrix farm name? What are the names of the Citrix server? So here. So it contains, it contains, let's say, name of farm, name of farm, uh, name of Citrix servers. Servers, their IP addresses, uh, their other networking information. Network information. Uh, uh, Citrix overall configuration, <clears throat> Citrix configuration, which server is your web interface server, which server is a, a then application server, which server is a data collector. All that information is stored in a data store. So data store is basically a database for your, for your Citrix servers. Now, guys, other than this, there are two other things that, that, that we need to remember. And those two things are, so right after this, so this is, I would say, farm being A, and this is being B, and this is C, and there is D. D is worker groups. This is called worker group. Worker group. Only one form information. Name of farm. Yes, this is just one. So one farm has one data store. One farm has one database. So that is one data store. It's part of the installation. It is, it is part of the installation, yes. <coughs> so guys, worker group, worker group, uh, worker group is a concept in which, so let's understand the worker group concept. Let's understand the worker group. Guys, worker group is something like this. Let's say I had this application to be published. This application to be published. published, meaning this application is required for all these users. And the application name is what is the application name? Any word. application name? Word. A word. Okay, a word application, or maybe a financial application, or maybe a hospital billing system. And this application needs to be accessed by, let's say, initially 40 people and later on it will be accessed by 400 people how many people 400. 400. now guys once this application is is published it is ready so one person requests this so that one person so you request it you got the application and as a you got the application sorry and then you got the application Raza. so three people got the application and three licenses are given right now let's say, just like three, there are 300 people accessing this application. Guys, in that case, only this application is being accessed by 300 people and there are other applications just sitting there. And there is a lot of load on this application. So what we can do is, since we know that this application is very, very busy, I can dedicate two servers just for this application. 
So I would separate out two ZNF servers. I would say these two ZNF servers are just for this application. And then in order to separate them and group them together just for one application is known as worker group. Worker group is a collection of ZNF servers that are dedicated to one application. You, you, make a, you make a group of servers that will only be used for this application. Can I get my application back? So that means for only one application? Yes. Yeah, no, no, it's my fault. So, you have catch Sir, catch Sir, you can catch No, 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 estimate. The, 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 the common man. <laughs> so, guys, worker group. Worker group. Licensing for one application, you two or multiple. Uh, no, so so licensing, which I'm going to go next topic, license is not based on application. Licensing is based on users. Applications, you can have as much applications as you want. So guys, worker group, so now worker group, it is, it is a collection, it is a collection of Zen app servers dedicated to one or more applications. It is a collection of ZenApp servers dedicated dedicated for a particular application. So now, how many worker groups can you have? You can have many worker groups. You can have many worker groups, depending on how many applications do you want to dedicate to. And worker group, guys, later on we're going to go into more details about worker group. Worker group is a very intelligent group. You can attach a worker group to a OU. You can attach a worker group to a OU. As soon as a one ZenApp server is added to that OU, it will automatically be part of a worker group. Remember OUs in Active Directory? In OUs, so worker group, so worker group is this. This is your Active Directory. An Active Directory has your domain. Let's say you have canf.local. Inside canf.local, you have those containers. Remember, uh, domain controller OU, then users OU, then computers OU. In this, I can create a, a, a OU, let's say, word worker group, w, WG. And inside this, I can add ZenApp server, let's say ZenApp server. Then app server number 10 and then app server number 11 are both for this one worker group. And as soon as in future, as soon as I add any then app server to this worker group, that then app server will automatically be added inside Citrix as part of that worker group. Mm -hmm. But only for this application. Only for this application, yeah. But this is a this is a being intelligent because because the because previous versions, what we had to do, you have to, first of all, you create a machine, you join it to a domain, then put it in a worker group, then you have to go into a Citrix console and do the worker group configuration as well. But now in newer version, as soon as any server is added to this particular OU, that server is automatically in Citrix, it will be added to that worker group. So you can attach a worker group to a OU as well. So first that server has to be put in that container. Yes. And automatically. No, no. First, you have to attach this OU. This OU. Remember, OU. OU stands for organizational unit. First, you need to attach this OU to a worker group in v in Citrix. I mean, worker group is created inside Citrix. So worker groups are created inside. So later on, one side, one side. For now, just remember this one application and one example. Worker groups are those servers that are dedicated to one application. Because there is a huge load on this application, just because of this one application, it is slowing down all other applications as well. So what you did, you separate this application on two dedicated servers. So now data collector knows that as soon as a request comes for this application, this request must go to these two ZenApp servers. That, that's what worker group is. Now, the second thing, the last thing here in this architecture is known as zones. Zone. Zone. Guys, zone. Zone refers to a physical boundary of your Citrix infrastructure. 
it is tied to a physical boundary of your Citrix infrastructure. Non, it, it is tied, it refers to, it refers to physical boundary of Citrix infrastructure. It refers to a physical boundary of your Citrix infrastructure. Now, now basically, how do you, how, uh, zone is very simple to understand, just like the concept of sites in Active Directory. You create a different site when you have a physical boundary. So you have one site, so here it will be something like, so you have Toronto site, you have, uh, you have Brampton site, and then you have a Montreal site. Since they are physically separate, we create three zones for each. So one zone of Citrix is here, second zone is here, third zone is here. Now, zone act as sites. What is what is one word for sites? Anybody remember? Sites are used for service localization. Service localization. Sites will make sure that all Citrix requests in Toronto, they should not go to Montreal. All Montreal users should be using only Montreal ZenApp server. So, so zone will confine them in one physical location. So zone, this is why it refers to a physical boundary of Citrix information, Citrix uh, infrastructure. So let's say, for example, if you have two sites, if you have two physical two physical sites in your infrastructure we would we would create two about two two zones we would create two zones Now, in each zone, there can be only one data collector. Each zone has its own data collector. So this is one, this is two. Each <coughs> zone has its own data collector for DC. Each zone has its own data collector. Now, the role of a data collector for Toronto user, data collector is receiving information, load balancing them. And for Montreal, it has its own. And when it comes to zone communications, data collector will talk to each other. So normal ZenApp servers cannot talk to each other in, in, in Toronto. So this is your Toronto site, and this is your Montreal site. And you have ZenApp servers here. Just like, do you, anybody remembers what is the server that, that talks to other sites and sites? What is the server that is responsible for replication between sites? Service. In Active Directory. In Active Directory. In Active Directory, sites and services, which server is responsible for cro cross-site replication? Which server is responsible? No. So bri Bridgehead? Bridgehead, sir! Thank you! Good memory. Although he lost his notes, but it's really lost his memory. He lost his memory. Ahmed has lost his memory. No, no, it's all there. It's, it's all here. Fine. It's a live book. Fine. It must be somewhere in your car. Okay, guys, here. So, Bridgehead server. Rule of Bridgehead server is rule of Bridgehead server. Bridge. If there are five DCs in this side. And there are four DCs in this side. Only two servers will talk to each other, and those are bridges. And same thing goes for zone. So if you have Toronto side and Montreal side, first of all, we'll create a zone for each of them. So this is zone one. 
zone 1, this is zone 2. And in each zone, there will be one designated DC, data collector. And data collector is basically responsible to talk to other zones data collector. Data, so data collector is the one that talks to cross zone uh, communication. So guys, these are the architectural components. So we, 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 we went through Zen App Server, web interface. Web interface is simply responsible. It provides a website. Web interface, main function of web interface, it just provides a website where people can go and request application. Next one, data collector. Data collector, you see, it has many functions. So one of those, few of those functions are number one, is that it receives information, load balance them. Secondly, it helps in client authentication, so it verifies the client before it gives them the access to the app server. Third one, it has the dynamic information. Fourth one is that it is responsible for cross-zone <coughs> communication as well. So data collector server. And then data store, there is one farm per data, uh, per, one data store per farm. And data store is basically the main database of your complete Citrix architecture. Complete Citrix configuration. Now in this case, Oh, in that case, I lost this. So in one server, let's say this is my only one Citrix server. This is everything now. This is a ZNF, this is a farm. It is, there is only one zone. By default, there is one zone. So one farm, one zone, one ZNF server, one data collector, data store, license server, website, web interface, everything inside. Now, based on this, this, this information, let's look at this now. Let's look at this for a second. So here, if I go, actually, I'm going to re-record this video. I know the sound quality was really, really bad on this. Uh, patient, so I'm using so the here, here, patient 11, uh, patient 11, and you were patient 11. Okay, hold on. Let me open this from... In the meantime, everybody starts Citrix environment. Oh, yes, here it is. So, guys. So let's look at this. Uh, just let's look at this for a second. Now, based on this all information, guys, our lab is this. In our lab, we have three servers. We have three servers, and the first server is a DC, and this is going to be our licensing server as well. So, although in real environment you won't be having like this, but in our environment, just for having less number of servers, we installed our Citrix license server on this. And then once Citrix license server is installed, then these two are our Zen app servers. And as you can see, this server is a Citrix Zen app application server, plus this is also a web interface as well. And this other server, it is only going to be a Citrix application server. Now, I have not written the other components here. So we have two Zen app servers? We have two Zen app servers. And uh, uh, we have two, two Zen app servers. We have two Zen app servers. We have two ZenApp servers, one web interface, one licensing server. Huh? Right. So automatically the first one becomes the data collector. Automatically the first one will become a data collector. But this is our infrastructure. Everybody should be able to data make it. Store as well, first. it is, the first one is a data store as well. So now based on this, based on this, if you follow the video, just pause, follow, pause, follow, you will be able to create this. How many of you were able to create it? So you were able to create it, you were, you were, you were, okay, excellent. And how long it took you to create it? Around? One hour. And one hour. One hour. Yeah, it does take a while. Did you get any error messages too? No error message. It was straightforward. Okay. Okay, excellent. Um, you're going to re record this in case. Which one? This video. No. Why? <laughs> I'm going to 
record the part two, part three, part four. Now with better, better audio. Part one, part one, you'll be able to see everything, but but uh, audio is a bit, uh, bit shaky. Can you take a picture? Huh? Why, why did I change? I, I don't remember, but maybe, maybe it, 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 uh, maybe there was a reason. Maybe he was not able to log in. Oh yes, which is 2008. Yes, maybe he was not able to log in. So instead of resetting the account, I just, uh, I just removed it. Someone you mentioned in the last class that uh, the DC has to be in the 2008 R2. Yes, so guys, uh, in your case. For simplicity, have everything is 2008 R2, have everything in 2008 R2. Uh, so not 2012 and 2008? Uh, you can have it. You can have it, but it's better to, for simplicity, have everything in 2008. No, no, it's fine. Let it go. There you go. It's fine. One server, your DC, if it is. Now, guys, the only reason is, the only reason for this is, uh, now, we'll be using 2008 in VMware as 2008, so VMware will be also on 2008. Your exchange will also be on 2008. Only your SCCM will be on 2012. What? Now the reason is the reason is uh, we don't want to we don't want to be stuck on in operating system issues. We need to completely install the the application and and work with the application. And since 2008, there are no, there are not enough update security patches. They will give you many issues. So for that reason, we're installing. Otherwise, Citrix as an application will look exactly the same as on 2008 or 2012. There is no difference. So here, our main goal is to is to understand the application. Yes. Yes, Tika, if it is running. If your environment is running, guys, I would take snapshots on uh, on every major milestone. So if it is running, your two servers are installed, take a snapshot and maybe you can remove the previous snapshot. So just to save uh, space on your desk, because as soon as you take a snapshot, it takes a lot of space on your desk. Now, guys, let's look at this. Let's look at it. When we delete the server's snapshot automatically. Yes, it is deleted. But if you need to delete just the snapshot, you need to open Snapshot Manager and then delete it. So guys here, yeah. now based on whatever we have learned, so this is what we have learned and I'm gonna make the, now, the, uh, now the architecture. And this architecture that I'm gonna make now, you have to be 100% perfect with this architecture. But for now, let's a quick review of what we have learned so far. So Citrix, right here, Citrix. Citrix as a product, we are, we are working with Citrix uh, Zen app. But Citrix has other products as well. Citrix has Zen Server. Citrix has uh, uh, Citrix has Zen Server. Citrix has uh, 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 Zen Desktop, Zen Desktop, Zen Server, and Zen Application. Uh, so we are working as Citrix Zen app. The version we are working as 6.5. Previous versions, you need to just remember that before that it was uh, it was five. No, sorry, it was six. Then before that it was it was five. And then before that it was 4.x, and then next one is 6.7.6. 7.0 was there as well, but it was for a very short time. Now the latest version is 7.6. Now they the, ask these questions about. Uh, no, they won't. They won't ask you ask you this question. But the, at the end, when we are preparing for the job market, we're going to compare them, we're going to watch YouTube videos in, in, in order to just remember major differences between these two. And there won't be any major differences. If you are able to talk on this, you, sh you will be able to talk on this as well. Although this is, this is greatly changed. This is very, very changed. 
So, but still, if you able, if you're able to understand everything on this one, you will be able to understand many of the things in here. So here, but we need to remember that this. So here, Citrix, Zenith, versions, and then uh, right uh, right after this, we understood the the the, the application. Uh, why 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 what? Why, how about application virtualization? So we saw that, that example that why is it beneficial? And then we saw the components. So here we, we went through example. Example of what? Example of uh, one application. And then one application needed to be installed on 200 machines, 200 PC in two days. And then we discussed that and we, we, we uh, went down to Citrix solution. In Citrix solution, we found out that we need to install Citrix. In our solution, our solution was very simple. Install one Citrix server. Install one Citrix server. Install one Citrix server. And then on clients, on clients, what do you need to install on clients? Citrix receiver. Citrix server goes here. So this is this was our solution. And then we discuss components. Is this understandable? Yes, yes, okay. So, and then Citrix components, we went through components here. What are the components? Components. Uh, components are number one, farm. And then, then app server. Then app server. And server that? First one, application server. Second one, DC. Third one, licensing. Uh, fourth one, web interface. web interface. Can I see your notes? So, and, and then right under this, we went through worker group, data store. So there was a data store, and under that, there was worker group, and then we just saw notes. So this is so far what we've learned. Now, um, now guys, Citrix architecture uh, architecture diagram. So now is Citrix Why is it not right? It's fine, right? T U R E Architecture. T E C T U R E. T E C T U R E. T U R E. Right. Okay, thank you. The tracks architecture. Sometimes thinking and writing that doesn't sync. So, so guys, here, Citrix architecture diagram. In Citrix architecture diagram, now we need to see that how all these components work together. Now, in order to see how all these components work together, we need to know what is the objective. Objective is to provide a client with an application. So the client can be sitting here. So let's say uh, you have a client here in your network. So let's create a client here. This is your client. So this client, a Windows 7 client, needs some applications. So need some applications and those applications need it. So at the moment in your network, the only thing you have is, uh, is your own infrastructure. So you have a DC and DNS and they are both connected to the same network. You have DC. Client is able to log in to DC and this is what you have. Now on top of this, you need to create Citrix infrastructure. In order to create Citrix infrastructure, guys, the very first thing you need is, the very first thing you need is, you need a server that has a Citrix license. So here, we are going to create a server. So this diagram won't be exactly like this. I'm gonna create each component in a separate server so that we can understand it. So here, the first server, R2, this will be called Citrix licensing server. DC. No, this is a second server. This DC is separate. 
Yeah. JC server. So this diagram I'm gonna create just uh, just as uh, each each component on each server just for better understanding. And DC is like the Active Directory DC. This is Active Directory DC. So without Active Directory, Citrix is not possible. So you have to have Active Directory. Now whatever servers are used in Act, uh, in in Citrix, they must be member of your Active Directory. They must have the right IP address. They must be. So we all know that. So here you have a Citrix license server, and the second server. Second server you're going to need is um, second server. So then we're going to have, so let me create them here, uh, then app servers. So this is Citrix, Citrix, then app server one, and we're going to have two Citrix, then app servers. So Citrix, then app server two. Two Citrix then app servers. Now two Citrix then app server, and here two Citrix then app server, they will be inside a farm. This is known as a farm. This is known as farm. And then inside and then there is a server that, that stores the data store. So there will be another server. This is known as Citrix Data Store. And this holds the Citrix database. Instead of putting it so basically it will be in the network, it is like this, but for simplicity, let me bring the license server here as well. So license server. So this is just, it is connected. I'm just moving it here. So the same server is moving here. So, so you need two Zenx servers. There is one data store server. Then there is one Citrix license server. And where users connect to is you need a web interface. So here, right here, we're going to have Citrix interface. So I moved the license server here. So license server is here. This is web interface. Sorry about that. I'm just trying to make it simple. So once we run it, then it will be it will be simpler to understand. So our client is sitting here. Client will connect to web interface. Web interface will connect to one of the Zenapp server that is a data collector. Since this was our first Zenapp server, this this is just a web interface. So this is not a Zen, this does not have Zenapp application on this. This is a web interface. It, 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 it is the connection point for all of the users. So basically, this is hosting a website. So this is hosting a Citrix website. <coughs> Citrix web. And in this, you will the user will see all the application. Word is here, Excel is here, Skype is here. So this is web interface. So users basically connect from any client to this. From here, they'll be connected to the farm. They'll be connected to the farm. Now, within the farm, your very first Zenapp server, your very first Zenapp server will become a data collector. So this is your data collector. This is this server is your uh, is it's a DC. It is a DC, and sometimes it is also known as ZDC. Same DC is known as ZDC. ZDC means it is a zone data collector. It's a zone data collector. It is known as a ZDC. DC or ZDC is the same thing. So if I call it now, because this is a farm, and inside the farm you have a zone. So here inside it has a zone as well. So this is zone. Zone means that it is in front of zone. By, by default, there is only one zone. Just like in Active Directory, there is one default site. It has one zone. And that one zone has two Zenapp servers. And in that Zenapp server, the very first Zenapp server becomes a data collector. And this data collector is also known as ZDC. ZDC means zone data collector. So this is your, this, this, now this one is just a Zenapp application server. So now let's try to run it. Let's try to run it. In running, what happens is a user who is sitting here, 
a user who is sitting here needs to run web application but 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 there is no application hosted here so in order to in order to in order to host application i'm going to go through that process as well how do you host application and how does it work but for now user goes on to the web interface so user is here goes to the web interface as soon as he goes here on this it is empty web interface is completely empty why is it empty because there are no application hosted here so web interface is empty user can't do anything but the only thing that is happening here is very first time when the user goes here user will enter username and password on this console username and password and this username and password will be sent to the zone data collector zone data collector will send it to dc to verify it because dc has the username and password this so if it is verified then user will see another page with empty information because there is no applications there so here let me create the second page second page will be the uh, citrix application page so this is one page the second page will be this if the username and password is correct there is a licensing server, so I'm going to run it. Yes, there is a licensing right server. When the user try to connect to the web server, why yes. it's empty? The first time when it, because there are no applications. Right. Because this this web server, this web server main function of the web server is to give you a list of all application where you need to connect to. Here we haven't installed any application. We haven't packaged any applications yet. So that's why it's empty. So, so now this is just to show you when the user connects, it was empty to start with. Now let's host applications. Guys, hosting application later on, we're going to go through a whole process. But, but for now, let's understand I am going to host application here. Now, in order to host application, there are a few simple steps. For example, number one, you need to download that application, download, let's say, download application as, let's say, Word. So you, you downloaded it here, number one, and number two, publish it. So we need to publish it. There is a wizard that runs that publish the application. That publish the application. Now once the word is published here, so now the word is here, it is published, and then likewise you also publish WinZip, another application. As soon as they are published, now on this page, the user will see both applications. If applications are not published here, user won't see anything. So the only purpose of this web interface is to give you a user a list of applications that they can access. So that's the main purpose of this. Now, you have this. Now guys, uh, you have, if you need, if you need, if we need to load balance word application, if we need to load balance word application, you must publish it on the second server as well. So it has to be public. For example, if Word is not here, then Data Collector has only one server for this application. It cannot load balanced application. So this user, all the users who need Word, they will always be connected to this. So if you need this application to be available from any other server, we need to do the same thing. You need to download Word on this and publish it. So both applications are now published on this. So now, now what happens is, uh, and, and guys, this, these both servers, this farm is connected to here, the data store. Farm is also connected to a licensing server. Now, licenses, licenses in Citrix, licenses in Citrix, licenses in Citrix are of only one type. They are one type of license and they are known as concurrent licenses. These licenses are concurrent licenses. So here, these are concurrent licenses. And what is concurrent licenses, guys? Concurrent licenses are just like other, uh, unlike other operating systems, you have per device license and per user license. In Windows, you can have per device or per user. You can have licenses for number of users, or I can have licenses for devices. But guys, in Citrix, these are concurrent licenses. Concurrent licenses that let's say you bought 300 licenses, and now 
and now you have only 300 available and as soon as any license become available any other person can use it so concurrent means a license is given to you you used it and all 300 are in use so 300 one person cannot have cannot use this application as soon as any other person frees up a license that 300 one person can use it it is a lease type of license. That's so these much. license, these licenses are not tied to users or they are not tied to devices or they are not tied to application. These are just Citrix concurrent licenses. Transferable. Sorry? Transferable. They are transferable, exactly. Whatever like quantity they have mentioned, you cannot exceed that. You cannot exceed that, you have to buy more licenses. And unlike other applications like Microsoft, Microsoft sometimes they would let you reuse licenses in the evaluation version. They, they don't. So there is an evaluation version the first time when you install it's a 30 days evaluation. After 30 days you must buy or it will completely stop. So you have to plan that from the beginning. So licenses are, uh, are, are, are concurrent licenses. Now here you have a licensing server, you have a data store server, this is a Citrix database. So here uh, what, what do we know about a Citrix database? Guys, number one, it is a Citrix database, it is a Citrix DB, and it holds Citrix static information. Static, uh, uh, static information. Uh, it is Citrix static information. Citrix static information. And what is static information? Okay. Citrix configuration. Configuration. So this database holds Citrix configuration, meaning what are the names of your server, names of your server, names of your farm, uh, how many servers there are. So the static information that you have and that doesn't change every day. Maybe you need, you add more servers, you remove some servers, this information can change later on, but most of the time it is just a static information. Guys, here on this server, this server, number one, it is a ZDC, number one, it is a Zen app server. So this server is a. Uh, it's a Zen app application server. Let's see. This server is a Zen app. Zen app application server number one. It is a Zen app application server number one, and it is also a ZDC. And being a ZDC, it can do all the data collector functions. Do we remember data collector functions? Yes. Do we remember data collector functions? It collects all the information from the client. Do we remember direct collector functions? Yes, sir. Huh? No, huh? It no, do you or not? So the, no, the C -C not all of them. Any one of them. Is the client request? Is the client or the client stack static? No, it, it does load balancing. Load good. Yes, yes. How many servers? How many and servers. how much load is there exactly? Like so those. Like so guys, next time please review your notes and next next time remember these things. Uh, so here it is a data collector. It's a zone data collector. So this is a Zen app server there. And this server is just a Zen app application server. So this server is just a Zen app application server. It is not a data collector. It's so simple to remember. If you if you just can, I, mean, I know that for now it looks like a lot of information, but once you make this diagram a few times, it will be easier to remember. It will be easier to remember. So here. Now, one more thing, one more thing is they all have HLHC. They all have all the ZenApp, the ZenApp application server, they have something called LHC. L I know what you are thinking. It is a Lahore uh, license plate it. number. No, I <laughs> so LHC, LHC, LHC stands for local host cache, local host cache. This, this is known as local host C A C H E local host cache now local host cache is local host cache sits here so both of these servers have LHC in them now LHC is that if now LHC has partial information of data stores LHC is it has the partial information of data store so whatever is in data store this LHC is a, is a very small database. It's a very small infor, a copy of this database. Now, the main reason is at any point in time, if it loses connection from a data store, they can still work with each other by using LHC. So if 
that of node is not available for some reason. This, this, this server is completely crashed. So these, these servers with using this information know that how many other, how, uh, what, is, what is your Citrix configuration in this environment. So this is why it is known as local host cache. It is a cache memory of, of your data store. It's a cache memory of your data store. So basically, it's a it's a small copy, not a complete, not a complete Just copy a of this. Uh, you can say partial. you can say it's a partial information of your data store. Now, now, the reason is, what is the reason? Reason. The reason is, if this is disconnected for any reason. Now, for one thing, if LXC would have not been here, let's think of this. If LXC is not there. If LXC is not there and data store is lost, guys, this server will be will be blind. This server won't know how many other ZenApp servers are there or what is its farm information? What is the farm name? What is the other server's IP address? And and all those information that this has. That this uh, these both servers are dependent. So in case if this is the connection with this is lost, then they can still use connect to each other by using LXC. This is why it is known as local host cache. So that is, it has a local information, a partial copy of information of your data store sitting in each ZenApp server. <coughs> Very simple. Is it? No, 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 no. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, okay. Let's, uh, let me, let me, let me shut up for two minutes here. Let me share up. So, so I'll give you a few moments to just to digest this information, okay? and then I'll start again. I mean, this is not very difficult. This is the same thing what we discussed before the break. These are the same, same these components, and now in a diagram. Okay, two minutes. I think Citrix is very, Citrix is very complicated. It's not. Trust me, you haven't seen SCCM yet. <laughs> In SCCM, no, sir, it's, it's not difficult. Yes, it's a new. It's just, yeah. So, so it's fine. It's fine. People are going to listen. If people are going to see this video, one or two times, and it's going to be yes. Yes, yes. Try, try, try. No. Okay, guys. So in your first video, which I assume you have used, sir, uh, it was like a Zenith application. 
There is only one eye so perfect. There is only one eye so perfect. And that is why you, you don't have it. You, you took it? You took it or no? I'm just taking it. Make sure you have it. Otherwise, you won't be able to do it. Okay, guys, let's start. Let, let's start there. Let's start. So, guys, uh, seriously speaking, this is not difficult. This is not difficult. But I do understand. I do understand. You, this is all new to you. But in next one week, when you repeat some information, all the technologies are new for you guys. But if, if the very first day you start thinking and you put it on your mind, it is difficult, guys, you will never be able to do it. You have to say that this is very easy, I can do it. So is it easy or not? Yeah. It is very easy. So say after me, it is very easy. Very it is very easy. easy and I can do it. I and do it. I can do it. I can do it. It looks stupid, right? But guys, this has to be in our mind. Because the very first thing is you keep it on your mind. Oh, it's so <laughs> we don't have to do it. Guys, first thing, it, it is just a bunch of servers with a bunch of components. That's it. I mean, we you worked with many servers before. I mean, let's see how many things you already know in this. First of all, you all know that one, two, three, four, five, six. These are six 2008 servers. So to start with, these are all servers. Number one. Number second thing you already know is they are all on 192 network. So they're all pinging with each other. Right? Yeah, Number two, you already know. And after that, it, the only thing is just like when you created Active Directory, you created a forest. In Citrix, you create a form. So there you create a forest, here the form is created. In Active Directory, you create a site, and here zone is created. So just like zone, zone is just a physical entity, just like site is a physical. And in Active Directory, you create domain controllers. Here you have then up servers. So you try to relate to this and then create these diagrams. Once or twice you create it, it's not very difficult. Guys, let's try to drive it. So I have two types of clients here, yes. Can you draw the, uh, the cycle how it Yes, I'm going to go through this now. I'm going to go. So once we draw, once we drive into the cycle, it will be easier. So guys, here I have two types of clients. I have internal clients, question. Is this the that you then have a one service, it's a data store too? Which one? The first server was the DC mm -hmm. in the form, right? Yes. This is the data store too? The collectors. First server? This one? Yeah. This is a data collector. This is a data collector. This is a zone data collector. Yes. So they are both exactly the same server, right? They are both, both exactly the same server, server, and one of them is so data collector, one of them is not a data collector. One goes down, the other one. Both have LXC. Both have LXC in them. Both have LXE there and both are then app servers. Once again, can you please explain a little bit on the uh, Citrix data center? Yes, I, I'm going to explain this. I'm going to look first, let me drive it and then I'll explain it. Okay, so first of all, so first of all, guys, first of all, let's start with this. So, data cleaner shut down the server, then this whole process. Yes, yes, yes. Data cleaner, data cleaner server down. Then, yes. So it has to be the fail over sort of thing. Yes, it will. So other one automatically becomes a zone data so Yes. That now, uh, so this is this is what worker group is. Uh, in this diagram, there is no worker group. Like, I mean, worker group can be if I create a worker group of these two servers. You have to create. You have to give a separate name for that. Exactly. Right? It would be a separate group, but by default there are no worker groups. So if you don't need them, don't create them. But we're gonna create them. So guys, let me drive it here. Let me drive. So for next ten minutes, let, let, let's try to see. I have internal client. This is your internal company client, and this is your external home user. Both needs to access Word application. 
when external user comes it comes through the dmz firewall so they come through the internet we already know when you come through internet your company has firewalls here and the companies when they when they open their network they have dmz in their environment so dmz is a place that is between them and internet so this is internet users actually connect to internet and from here they connect inside your organization so that that's one thing user from here or user internet in both cases, guys, in both cases, the first stop for a user is a web interface server. So for this user, it will be a web interface server. This is one. And even here, the user connect to a web interface server. So for both of them, they, they both need to connect to a web interface server. Very simple. Now, in many companies, more than a web interface server, they also deploy another server which is known as NetScaler. NetScaler is a completely separate application. NetScaler, NetScaler acts as an application firewall as well. It is a load balancer as well. It's a whole different product. But, but as a Citrix person, we need to know that what is NetScaler. NetScaler also sits with web interface. So this actually, this, this acts as a, a, as a Citrix load balancer or Citrix firewall. So basically, all the request that comes from here, this will scan the request and then that would let it go inside. So, so this is, for now, you can say this is a security product and this is for protection. So NetScaler is here for our protection so that this is a legit user. Maybe there is a hacker. Maybe there are hackers who are trying to connect. So it would, it would just scan. So they would connect here into web interface. From web interface, they would either go here or they can directly connect to NetScaler as well. In both cases, if they connect here, from here they can go directly to ZDC. And if they go here, from here they go to ZDC. Now, why am I saying two cases? Because some companies cannot afford this product. If they cannot afford this product, it's fine. They can directly go here, and then, uh, and then from here they can connect to this. But on this, they need to install Access Gateway. Now, NetScaler and Access Gateway. So this one and Access Gateway. These are both these are both security products that are used for encryption decryption from this network. Encryption description from this network. So for now later on, there is a chapter on this. We are going to go into more detail, but I made this pro this server here so that we remember that what is a what is NetScaler. For now, we only need to remember NetScaler is here for security purposes. <laughs> It is, it is sitting in DMZ. It is sitting in DMZ. And DMZ is where your firewall is. We studied DMZ when we are studying VPN, right? Yes. So like in, in this case, even in Citrix, we have to have this DMZ. Exactly. So everything like internal, external network, what's happening inside, outside, has to go exactly. through DMZ. Exactly. Exactly. Doesn't matter a VPN or anything. Doesn't matter anything. Yes. So. At any point in time, at any point in time, with any application, whenever applications are needed to be accessed for these users, companies have DMZ. So yeah. DMZ is like a gate from where the information but enters. At that but time, we were talking about external users. So this is also external users. So what about like if somebody in an in a internal network is which, using Which it? is this one. So internal, we don't, we don't need that. no, no need of DMZ. Ex external users. DMZ is only required for external users. So when we enter the client, anyone from external user enter through VPN. So DMZ already available there. Yes. So why did you use this DMZ? What? So VPN is also DMZ. No, it's the same DMV. It is the same DMV. They are not two different DMV. They are the same DMV. So the, this web interface server here, DMZ, uh -huh. uh -huh. so now, the, 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 now we don't need that web, uh, web ser uh, interface server here? Uh, we we users, do need this for need internal users, for yes, internal users. exactly. For and external. this is for just external users. Okay. This is for, yes. They receive external requests. Yes. What? They receive external requests. No, that's is different. This is a different. That is a different product. This is a different product. Okay, guys. Let's drive, drive, drive. Okay, so let, let, let's go through this guy. So, we know that as soon as any user needs to use Citrix, they need to, they need to connect to web interface server this is a web interface server 
This is for internal user, this is for external user. So the information goes here, number one, and information goes here, number one. In both cases, web interface server sends this request to ZDC. It would locate your ZDC and it would send this request to ZDC. So second stop is this, ZDC. Now ZDC is the one that is receiving all of the requests. So basically a request came here, the request is sitting here. And the second request is sitting here. And also the request from here is also sitting here. So now three requests from internal external users. As soon as it is here, now ZDC would decide that this request would go to this one or this one. So this is the very first function. Now before the request is sent to these two servers, what ZDC does, ZDC would send this information, ZDC would send this information to, uh, ZDC would send this information for username and password to a DC. So from here, since they log in, they send username and password, it goes to here and ZDC would contact the DC here, which is number three here and would verify username and password. Yeah. So here now authentication is being done. Once this is done, once this is done, then ZDC before, still ZDC is not releasing the application. Fourth number is that it would go to the licensing server and check for licenses. If there are enough licenses, then it would, then only it would take the application and give it back to the user. So there are four steps to this. So first of all, user goes to a web interface server. From web interface server, it sends the request to ZDC. ZDC authenticates it. And right after that, it would check the license. Let's say authentication is fine and no licenses. The fifth one is uh, ZDC to client. Request sent to client. Fifth one. Yes, 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 that too, that too, that too. But yes, so, so just a second, just a second, let me make sure that everybody is there. Okay, here, let's look at this. Here, so one, so one is here, uh, that DC, that DC to domain controller, authentication, authentication done, then it checks the licenses, if there are enough licenses, then it, then it would send, that DC would send this request back to, let me use another marker. Uh, let's use this one. So from here, the product will be given to the user actually. So from here, it goes to the user. So which means, word is given to the user and this is number five. So which means now there are two checks here. One check was here. If there are no licenses, user will be rejected. If the user is not authenticated, user will be rejected. And the third reason is, if let's say the, the server cannot get more requests, the server's memory is done. The third reason is, maybe there are server's resources are all uh, used up. So if server does not have enough resources, then it won't be able to give checkpoints. So basically there are two checkpoints. So even for external user, external user, connect to web interface, it would go to ZDC, ZDC will load balance the request. So one request goes here, second request will go here. But before giving the request to the Zen app server, it would authenticate the user, check the license, and then let the user connect. Very simple. Question? Question? Is this understandable? Kind of? No, no, wait, can I get it? We all change it. Just clear one thing like the CPIC has a data set like storage. Why do we need this if we have EC and Again, one more time? Why do, why, why do we need this? Okay. Okay. So ZDC, guys. Guys, the question here is, what is the big difference between a ZDC and data store? Guys, data store is actually created the first time when, when, when ZenApp was first time installed. So, Z, so data store is basically the complete database of this all infrastructure. So data, data store has, uh, uh, what is your farm name? And ZDC does not have the farm name. ZDC is basically dealing with dynamic information. ZDC <laughs> is dealing with then how much load is on the server, which which server is available. So load, uh, number of users, number of users, number of applications, uh, where are the worker groups, and all that information. 
So basically, ZDC is dealing with all dynamic. This is all static information. The first time when you install Citrix, it will all store that information. Okay, your farm name was this. Your Citrix, you have uh, three Citrix Zen app servers. You have one web interface and the name of the web interface and IP address and all that. Yeah. Is there no browsing on the uh, data on data store server? server? No, not right now, but later you can have it. Mm -hmm. Now this data store can be SQL Server. It can be on SQL Server as well. If you don't install SQL Server, then it will you can you will you will be asked to you will be asked to use the free version of SQL Server that is Express. You will use Express here. Just like in WDS, it asks for internal database or external database. So it is using internal database. Okay, so let's see. Let, let, let's check these points out for two minutes. Let's ponder. Let's see. So match with your diagram. If you have it, maybe discuss. Maybe discuss and then we'll, we'll, we'll go through this one more time. So we need to install uh, like database from the Express version. No, Express version is all kind of all server. It is by For large model, we need to license. For large model, we need to license. Oh, yes, we need a paid license.
The licensing is per device in Citrix. No, 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 no. It is per current licenses. Guys, excellent. Now here, um, so we need to remember, so here from this diagram, we just need to remember two things. The components and the flow. So if you are able to remember components and flows, then this is, uh, uh, th this will be excellent. Now here, I'm going to create zone in, in zone infrastructure. So this is, this is, I mean, this, 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 this looks okay, right? In, in one form, it can be three, four zones. Huh? Zone can be more. Zone can be 80 or 100 zones. So, so here, now, now guys, zones are something like this. Zone is, this is your Toronto site. So this is my Toronto site, and Toronto site I have zone. So this is zone one, and this is my Montreal site, and this is I have zone two. So this is for Montreal, this is for Toronto. In Toronto zone, I have two ZenF servers, ZenF server one, ZenF server two. So this is uh, ZenF one, Zen two, Zen three, Zen four, Zen four. And they're all in one farm. So one farm and two zones here. So one farm, one farm. This is farm and there are two zones. Now guys, in these zones, one thing to understand, this one, let's say it is your ZDC and this one is your ZDC. So ZDC and ZDC will communicate with each other. So there is one ZDC each zone. If one, if your main ZDC goes down, the other one automatically becomes the second is, is ZDC. Now in both of the cases, you don't need different licensing server. There can be same one, one license server. So your license server, and for this complete environment, you need one license server here. So this is your Citrix license server. And same thing goes for your data store. So Citrix data store is here. Now both of them are connected to the same farm. So for licensing information, they all go here. For uh, for Citrix information, uh, for for all you, their data store information, it is there. And they all have, and they all have LXC in them. So since all of them are uh, a ZenF server, they all have LXC. With LXC, they know that which server belongs to which zone and what other ZDC they need to talk to. Web server? And web server, in this case, there can be one web, web server, or you can have, depending on your environment, the web server in each site. So here, you can, you can have only one web server as well. So let's say web server is here, web interface, and this web interface, users will connect from here to the web interface, and web interface from here, they can connect to the ZDC. Now let's say, for example, if this is a Toronto user, if this is a Toronto user, connects to web, web interface, web interface regardless of wherever the request goes. For example, you are a Toronto user and you're traveling to uh, Montreal. So you're in Montreal, you would connect to web interface here. The tr in Montreal network, you will always be directed to the local ZDC. Because as soon as your IP is coming from the local, you will always be directed here. In Toronto, you will always be directed here. But let's say you are you are um, a Montreal user, and uh, you're, you're a Montreal user, and you're, you're in Toronto. So you will go to web server. Your information will go to your local server, and local server realizes that you're not in Montreal anymore. So this would send that information to the other DC, and from here you would get the application. So even if you are a user of a second city, you will always be getting application from the local place. So what, that, what are the external users? External user, exactly the same thing. External users come from here. Web interface would send you to the ZDC. And from ZDC, if you're a Montreal user, you will be disconnected. You're connected over there and if you're here. So, so in so let's say somebody is a Montreal user. Uh -huh. And he's in Toronto. He's in Toronto. So it won't like it won't get the uh, localization. It will. It will get a localization. Now, in that case, in that case, the external time? user is not in Montreal. He's in Toronto. If so, whatever is the closest site, Local closest site. zone, it, your your that DC will let you connect to the closest Local. zone, wherever you are. If you are over the network in Montreal, you connect to the Montreal that DC. If you are over the network from there, it will be yes. Just want to continue from his question when he said, uh, "What about the external users?" Uh, let's say if we have the main 
uh, server and all the infrastructure in Toronto. Mm -hmm. okay? And then uh, the user is sitting in Montreal. Mm -hmm. So basically, he's connecting to the uh, Toronto room. Right? So if this is your if this is your internet site, internet office. facing site. Yes. So guys, in that case, I mean, this is an architecture discussion. So this is your Toronto site. This is your Toronto site, and this is your Montreal site. Guys, in all of the companies, the company needs to decide which is my internet facing site. Do they need to open both sites to internet? So this is your internet. I mean, let's say this is your internet. Do they need to open both sites to internet or do they need to open one site to internet? For medium sized companies, guys, they don't prefer to open many gates to internet. Why? Because if they open two gates to internet, then they have to then they have to provide security to both of the gates. So most of the time, medium sized company would only open one gate to the internet and locally they're all connected through a dedicated link. So they won't open two gates. Now in large sites, they will have two or three gates to the internet. So let's not go into that discussion at the moment. For, for Citrix, just remember this. The thumb rule is, from wherever the user is connected, the, the closest zone ZDC will be given to the user. Really? Now, how does it, how is it possible? It is possible by, by, by local zoning that we do through zoning, through IP addressing, through subnetting, it, it is possible. Ports are same? Right? No, there are, there are different ports. There are different ports. OK, guys, let's take advantage of this uh, next 10 minutes. So in next 10 minutes, I want to show you my infrastructure. And for all of you, I want to give you a hint how to, how to create a licensing. So at the moment, whoever has followed my, the videos, you're at this part. Whoever is follows the video, you're at this part. So first of all, the infrastructure started with this. In the video, I created this server first, yes. and then this server, and then this server, then I installed Active Directory inside. Before that, I set up IP addresses, I set up the names properly, and then I, I installed Active Directory and, and make the member of Active Directory. And then I took a snapshot. So take a snapshot of your basic environment. And then the very first thing I did, I installed Citrix licensing server on this. For this, you're going to need a Citrix CD. So you are going to need Citrix 6.5. The CD is provided to all of us. It's a evaluation version. Uh, in, and you would insert that CD once you install the setup. It will ask you which component you need to install. So the only component you're installing on this is licensing yes. server. Secondly, on this one, you will install ZenApp and web interface. It is all in the video. It is instructions are all there. Guys, all you need to do is to is to is to is to uh, somehow take out an hour or two for this installation and complete it before the next lecture. 